Hi everyone, I'm Talia and today I wanted to talk to you about how to turn a dream into a viable story idea. So last night I had a dream that was kind of in the sci-fi fantasy genre that I'm partial to and so I was hoping that I could turn it into a story. Short story, novel length, doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure I wrote it down and kept it for later. So the first step was I wrote it down. Now when you're writing down a dream, oftentimes they don't really make sense. It is a dream. There was no um, quality control. A lot of times things don't make sense and you can write in the notes that it didn't make sense. So um, what I wrote was that there was a young girl and a creepy father figure who wasn't letting her go anywhere. And so what she did was she took her hand and put it on herself and pulled out like a clone of herself, but it wasn't, it acted a lot like her, but it wasn't a hundred percent like her. It was partial to one of her emotions. Okay, the second step after I wrote it down just factually what it was, is I wanted to capture the feelings that made me love it in the first place. So I described the father as being kind of weird and creepy. He had some kind of hidden motive, I felt. So I wrote that down. Um, the girl was very unassuming. She seemed like she acknowledged him as his father and lo kind of loved him, like that was the life she knew, but she was always trying to get away. So I put that feeling into there too. So again, just get the feelings down, whatever made you love it, and what the characters put off their vibes as, because that's something that you can use to recreate the feeling of the dream in your story. So step three, after I wrote down the facts and I wrote down the way it made me feel, is I kind of got into the why. The why, why would I have this feeling about this dad that he was hiding something, and why would she be so nice to her dad even though he's kind of weirdly keeping her locked inside the house and so I came up with this idea that um, he raised her but he isn't her father and she is unaware of that fact and she's hopefully gonna find it out when she leaves so I kind of searched for what I thought would be an exciting point to the feeling that I was having so now that I have written down the facts, written down the feelings that I wanted to evoke, and kind of started searching for why those feelings could arise, the next step is to just get rid of it. Throw it out, not completely, but <laughs> keep it in the back of your mind and just go. Because the whole point is to have fun when you're writing. Okay, so I wrote two scenes, very short. So the first one is at the beginning, and I named the father Beauregard and the daughter Rose. It's going to be very close to the beginning, kind of in character development. You see this routine that Beauregard and Rose have. Enter, child, Beauregard said in his loud, commanding tone. The door creaked open with Rose's delicate hand on the handle. She was a young girl transitioning into a woman. Her platinum blonde hair and white ethereal gown gave her a ghostly look, but it didn't detract from her beauty. Come, sit, he ordered. Rose wandered over to the high-backed armchair that sat facing the bed in which Beauregard lay. Beauregard was propped up and reading some sort of newspaper that he set beside him before turning to look the girl in the eye. Aye. She didn't look away, but calmly waited. Recite the admonition. Rose took a breath and began. She recited the same phrase every night for reasons she didn't understand, but didn't question. It was just a ritual she had with her father for as long as she could remember. When she said the last word, Beauregard nodded once, then waved a hand toward the door. Rose stood and left. So that was the first one. It's at the beginning, so that you can see their weird relationship. And the next scene is supposed to come after Rose has just done the cloning thing and left her clone behind. <laughs> Enter, child, Beauregard said in a loud tone, shocked that the time had come so soon. The door creaked open with Rose behind it. Come sit, he said, waving her in. Rose took her place in the high-backed chair and folded her hands in her lap. 
It had been a long day, so Burgard lay against his pillows with his eyes closed. Recite the admonition, he said, almost bored. Rose took a breath and began. She recited the phrase until the end when she took a gulp of air, then said the final word. Burgard's eyes shot open, and he sat straight up in his bed. He leapt out and grabbed Rose by her upper arms, his massive hands closing around them tightly. Say it again, he hissed, inches away from her. Rose looked frightened, but she took a breath again and began. Again, she stopped right before the last word, gulped for air, then said it. Beauregard laughed, then shoved Rose toward the door. Go to your room and stay there, he ordered. Rose ran to her room as Beauregard continued to laugh. So in that scene, he, we find out, he's gonna, we're gonna find out that he's do, been doing a test with this ritual the whole time that you can, he knew about her power and you could tell from a clone. You could tell that a person's a clone by the fact that they have less air in their lungs than a normal person. So they're not able to say entire lines in a single breath because they have less air because they're not the original. So that was the idea I came up with for my story, and that's just the beginning. I have some other little pieces from the dream that I'm going to be adding in later. And also I'm going to be creating a whole bunch of stuff that's new. I hope that if you are having trouble how to get a dream into a story that this has helped you, or if you just get inspired by listening to what other people are writing about and dreaming about, like I do, then this will be great for you that too. Thank you so much for watching my video on how to turn a dream into a story idea. If you have a dream that you're trying to turn into a story, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. So please do that. Please subscribe. And I apologize for the shaky camera and the out of focus. Uh, I was having technical issues with the other one. And so I have my computer on a shaky surface that the dog and the cat keep bumping. Very sorry. But thank you for watching. So my idea behind the story was I was going to have a cat in my shot. Do you guys mind cat in the shot? Is that weird? Is it weird to have a cat in the shot? It might be. <laughs>